Hello everybody, back with a series of videos, this time talking about deploying what we call the Day 2 Operations Suite, uh, which is something that you can do for both ACI and for NXOS. Uh, specifically, what I'd like to talk about in this video is deploying uh, a number of components that sort of fall under the Day 2 Operations Suite, and namely those are called Network Insights Resources and Network Insights Advisor. And more specifically, of deploying these on what we call the application services engine. So before I get started, I need to call out a big thanks to my colleague, Matthias Wessendorf, who did most of these slides and kind of figured out the entire workflow. I'm just the guy making the movie for you. So what is this uh, services appliance or this application services appliance? Well, it's a cluster of three UCS C-series rack servers that are pretty well provisioned. They're M5s. Uh, pretty good Intel CPU memory and hard drive. Now what you see on the screen here are those specs uh, and there's a PID to order a single node but I really need to point out if you're going to do this in real life you need to look at the PID on the bottom because you need to order a cluster of three and that particular bid, uh, PID just kind of takes care of all of that for you. Uh, there's no guessing in what you actually need to order if you start there. Now you can deploy this physical cluster in two modes of operation, one that we call fabric internal and the other that we call fabric external. Now, if you're now because we're talking about deploying network insights here, the mode that you want will always be fabric internal, at least at the recording of this video. So that's the one we're going to focus in on. Um, the other thing I need to point out here is when you order or if you should order this application service engine cluster, it might come with an older version of software running. And I, and I want to just highlight that you need to be running 1.1.2 I or later to support NI whatever on fabric internal mode. Now, when you get your cluster from the factory you, you, and you see that it's an older version, you might have to upgrade. Now, hopefully by the time you see this video and by the time you decide to order, receive and rack all this stuff up, we'll be long past that version. But in case you have it, I just want to point out that you might need to upgrade. Now, what's this business about the fabric internal mode and, and why is it the one that I need? Well, this is uh, a method of connecting this directly to the ACI fabric and we uh, then allow you to access the user interface directly from APIC. So operationally, all of this is very familiar and very cohesive. This is also the mode that, in fact, the only mode as of today that supports Network Insights Resources and Network Insights Advisor. Now, we will support many other types of applications down the road, namely one of those being multi-site orchestrator. This mode does not support MSO. So this is, and this is only supported with a single fabric today. We support a fabric with multipod, but what we're talking about is we don't support this with multi-site yet. We will. Now the other one, the fabric external mode, uh, is something that uh, will not allow you to run anything Network Insights. This was primarily a mode that we allow if you want to run multi-site orchestrator, but we're not going to talk about that in this video, but it's just a note for you to keep in the back of your mind. So let's look into how we actually connect uh, this stuff to an existing ACI fabric. So you can see over here, I've got my APIC cluster and, and there's a couple of lines missing, but those APIC clusters are attached to the fabric like they always have with multiple 10 gig ports, etc. cetera. Uh, on top of APIC, we're going to show you that you need to install a tiny little app uh, uh, called the Service Engine, Engine app. But what I wanna focus in on is connecting the Service Engine cluster is almost identical to the way you connect your APICs directly to the leaves in your ACI fabric. So that's this picture on the left. Uh, if you look at the picture on the right, that's just a quick zoom in of say the back of a, of a member of the cluster here. You're gonna take those two 10 slash 25 gig ports, connect them up to any couple of leaves on each one. There is also an out of band management port. And this is important that you also connect this. What I haven't shown is the SIMC port. Um, yeah, ideally you'd wanna connect that, but that's entirely optional. That gets you into the hardware level access of the UCS server itself. So obviously um, in a single pod, this is what it would look like and everything would be connected to pod one, no mystery there. What about if you have multi-pod? So this is the way that you have to connect it. Notice that all three nodes are connected to pod one. What we don't support is having say a couple of nodes in pod one and another node in pod two. That will likely come in the future, but as of March, 2020, everything has to be in pod one. So kind of keep that in mind when you rack and stack these things. 
So um, really quickly, you know, why an appliance? Like what's the benefit of me actually buying an appliance? Uh, and in this case, not only is the hardware spec appropriately, but we've pre-installed, um, you know, a basic set of, of, of container-based resources all configured, all ready to go. Uh, so all the stuff on the bottom half of the gray bar, the bottom underneath that is is all done for you. It comes with the appliance. And then the stuff that you install on top of that is the, are the orange boxes that you that you would go and do yourself. But the idea here is we have a tested, specced, and pre-configured appliance container in, uh, infrastructure all set up for you and ready to go so that if you're not an expert with containers or Kubernetes, you don't have to worry. It's all done for you. In terms of redundancy, all three service nodes will run in a mode that we call master. Uh, you can replace a node if a node fails, uh, and, but you need to have at least two for all this stuff to work. If you lose more than two nodes, you are going to have to rebuild this cluster, unfortunately. So, I mean, that's a pretty rare case, but just in case it happens, you understand what needs to be done. So I mentioned a little bit earlier, there is a companion application that we will install on APIC. Uh, called the Cisco Application Services Engine. This app is needed because it's going to help us uh, provision all of the stuff we need, configure everything uh, with minimal uh, user input. We have to give it a couple of uh, choices of variables and things like that, which I'll show you in a minute. But this is something that you're going to launch from APIC, and it's going to handle the joining and the configuration of the cluster for you. So once we install that little applet, this is a view from the from the point of view of APIC, we're going to have to go through a, a sort of a first time setup wizard. And I'll, in the next video, I'll actually show you going through all of that stuff. Uh, so uh, we're going to click on uh, the begin cluster configuration button, which will uh, bring us to another screen where we'll have to input some of the variables that uh, are required or specific to our network. So I wanted to really quickly go over those things first. So you're going to need basically three networks that you're going to have to pick and a VLAN. So uh, the service engine in-band management subnet, uh, obviously this is uh, used by the service engines so that we can communicate between the nodes. And this is all taking place inside the, the tenant called management on the VRF for in-band connectivity, right? Just be aware that this network cannot overlap with other networks that you have going on in tenant management VRF in-band, okay? The second one is an application network, and this is uh, allowing for the communication between clusters across the services nodes. Uh, and uh, we're going to just basically pick a network and the application will configure everything we need for us. And then finally, there's something called the service network. And this is, is really just for the containers uh, to talk to each other inside a service engines cluster. So you're going to have to make some decisions before before you go to this wizard about what you want those networks to be. And, and this is what the window will look like. And again, I'll show you in the next video going through this live, uh, but these are the questions that you have to answer. You gotta give it a name. You gotta choose those couple of networks um, and, uh, and, and basically uh, a VLAN range for uh, the, um, the service engine cluster members to physically connect to the ACI fabric. You know, they need a VLAN, NCAP, standard ACI port configuration still applies. So once you answer these questions uh, and give it access to DNS and NTP as well, which, uh, by the way, I should point out, needs to be reachable through the out-of-band connection of your, of your cluster, um, it's basically the application will take over and will automatically configure all the uh, objects and their attributes and their relationships for you. It's actually quite easy, uh, but I just wanted to really quickly give you a, a view into what's going on. And these next few slides are just for your information because all this stuff is done for you by the app in, that you're running uh, in APIC. So it's going to create some application profiles. It's going to create some bridge domains. It's going to map all of this stuff for you together. Uh, it's going to create physical domains and VLAN pools, again, based on the input of the wizard that you saw a couple slides before. It'll create the AEP, all of the policy groups, all of that physical port panel con configuration, and all of the things that you need uh, to make all of this stuff work. And again, you don't have to do anything. The app is doing it for you. And then finally, it binds it all together, and the clusters will start configuring themselves and actually join the network. So at this point, I'll end this first video. And in the next video, I'm actually going to show you on my own lab with a real uh, service engines cluster what all of this stuff actually looks like. So stay tuned.